Bishop David here again talking to you about the mystery of the church and I welcome you to this second little video broadcast. We're going to think about the church now as a mystery of faith. We often think of faith as something to do with God, don't we? God, Father, Son and Spirit, the Blessed Trinity is a mystery of faith to us. But how do we think about the church? As I said last time, probably as an institution and a, a, a not very good one at that at times. But I think we need to understand very clearly what the church is for. So if we look at how the church exercises her pastoral ministry, and when I say this, I'm not just thinking about bishops, priests and deacons, but I'm thinking about everyone who, through the sacrament of baptism, is called to membership in the church. We are called to celebrate the sacrifice of Christ in the Eucharist. We do that together and we are all involved in that together. We're also called by Jesus to be teachers and preachers all of us, by virtue of our baptism, to go to the ends of the earth, as the risen Christ put it, in order to proclaim the good news of the gospel. So that's our mission. And that has to become a living reality within us if we are going to be effective. This is something that St. Peter says in the fifth chapter of his first letter to pastors, to priests in particular. He wrote, I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker in the glory that is to be revealed. I love that. If we say we want to follow Jesus, then we have to be like Jesus. We have to do what Jesus did. We have to teach. We have to proclaim the kingdom of God. And we have to show the signs that God and his kingdom are present amongst us. The miraculous signs, if you will. And we also have to experience that relationship with God our Father that Jesus experienced himself. So we are called as a church to open up that mystery of life in Christ to our world around us. That's what it means when St. Peter invites priests to be administrators of the mystery of God. And so we have to be able to hear the voice of God speaking to us in and through the church today. And we need the skills to be able to do that. As I say, the church is not just a thing, it's a mystery of faith. And uh, it's not just an organisation or an object, it's a living community. And one of the beautiful titles for the church is the body of Christ. This is what God has revealed in his mercy to us. And that means that the church demands something of us, that we are invited to enter into the life of the church to take responsibility for our belonging to the church. Now there is uh, an obvious point here that the church existed before us and the church in fact existed before anyone reflected upon it. The church as a community was there because it was created by God, not by us. And as we find ourselves belonging to the church, we then are encouraged and invited to reflect upon what that actually means. Now, I can never move too far away from some words that Pope Benedict XVI wrote at the beginning of his first encyclical letter, Deus Caritas Est. You may know them because they are very familiar words, but again, I think they help us to understand the church as a mystery of faith. This is what Pope Benedict wrote. Being Christian 
is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. How about that? There, in a few words, if you will, is not only the encapsulation of every mystery of faith, it is a real idea that helps us to understand what the mystery of the church is all about. It's not about rules and regulations. It's not about ideas and thoughts. The church is about helping each other to encounter Jesus Christ. I think that's a very important thing for us to uh, appreciate. And it also helps us to understand that that loving relationship with Jesus enables us to, to do theological inquiry. When we think about the church, we are using the tools of theology to do that, and these uh, uh, tools produce a very real knowledge. You know what it's like, you meet someone, you get on with someone, you become friends. The more time you spend with your friend, the more you get to know her or him. You begin to open up your life in a very different way as you find your friend fascinating and at times, truth be told, frustrating. But there's a real knowledge that simply comes from spending time with your friend. And in the church, that's how we grow in our knowledge of God. We spend time with God through the vehicle of the church. So theology is uh, in a way like philosophy, literature, art, ethics, history, natural and social sciences, mathematics, all of these disciplines lead us to a very real knowledge. But we have to appreciate that theological inquiry also leads us to a different kind of knowledge. And when we talk about knowledge, let me remind you of something that Jesus said, something I find quite challenging really. He says, the demons know who he is. But just knowing is not enough. So we might know what the church is, but we can't do that as it were as objective bystanders, just looking in from the outside. It is only when we find ourselves in the midst of the church's community, only when we find ourselves experiencing that relationship with God, which we are called to have together, that we begin to really understand what knowledge leads to. It leads to love. It leads to a profound relationship not only with the Lord, but with each other. So I want to encourage you to think about these things because we are beginning to reach a point now in our reflection together where we need to, um, to appreciate what knowing about the church really leads us to. And someone once put it this way, the fruit of theological reflection is the bringing to birth and nurturing of that awe and wonder which gives praise to the living God. Do you go into your church on a Sunday morning and prepare yourself to celebrate Mass together with your brothers and sisters and go, wow, this is something awesome. This is something very powerful. I know, we don't do that too often, do we? Maybe on big pilgrimage occasions when we're all gathered together, we have that real sense of being together and it can be awesome. But if we can do this as individuals, if we can reflect upon the church as a mystery of faith and come to a deeper understanding of what that means, then I can assure you with all the wisdom of the saints that will indeed lead to awe and wonder and giving praise to the living God.